Travels of Marco Polo, Chapter 20, of the great desert country between Kerman and Kobiam, and of the bitter quality of the water. Upon leaving Kerman and traveling three days, you reach the borders of a desert extending to a distance of seven days' journey, at the end of which you arrive at Kobiam, Kubanan. During the first three days, but little water is to be met with, and that little is impregnated with salt, and is as green as grass and so nauseating that none can drink it. Should even a drop of it be swallowed, frequent calls of nature will result, and the effect is the same from eating a grain of the salt made from this water. In consequence of this, persons who travel over the desert are obliged to carry water along with them. The cattle, however, are compelled by thirst to drink such as they find, and a flux immediately ensues. In the course of these three days, not one habitation is to be seen. The whole is arid and desolate. Cattle are not found there because there is no sustenance for them. On the fourth day, you come to a river of fresh water, but one which has its channel for the most part underground. In some parts, however, there are abrupt openings caused by the force of the current, through which the stream becomes visible for a short space. Water is abundant. Here, the wearied traveler stops to refresh himself and his cattle after the fatigues of the preceding journey. The circumstances of the latter three days resemble those of the former and bring him at length to a town of Kobiam. Chapter 21 of Kobiam and its Manufactures Kobiam is a large town, the inhabitants of which observe the law of Mahomet. They have plenty of iron and ondanik, Indian steel, famous for its use in swords. Here they make mirrors of highly polished steel, of a large size and very handsome. Much antimony or zinc is found in the country, and they procure cutty, which makes an excellent collyrium, eye salve, together with spodium, by the following process. They take the crude ore from a vein that is known to yield such as is fit for the purpose, and put it to a furnace. Over the furnace, they place an iron grating formed of small bars set close together. The smoke or vapor ascending from the ore and burning clings to the bars, and as it cools, becomes hard. This is the tutty, while the gross and heavy part, which does not ascend, but remains as cinder in the furnace, becomes the spodium. Chapter 22 of the journey from Kobiam to the province of Timochain, and of a particular species of tree. Leaving Kobiam, you proceed over a desert of eight days' journey, exposed to great drought. Neither fruits nor any kind of trees are met with, and what water is found has a bitter taste. The travelers are therefore obliged to carry with them as much as may be necessary for their sustenance. Their cattle are forced by thirst to drink whatever the desert affords, which their owners try to render palatable to them by mixing it with flour. At the end of eight days, you will reach a province of Timochain, situated towards the north, on the borders of Persia, in which are many towns and strong places. Here, there is an extensive plain remarkable for a species of tree, called the Tree of the Sun, and by Christians, Arborset, the dry or fruitless tree. Its nature and qualities are these. It is lofty with a large stem and with leaves green on the upper surface, but white or bluish on the under. It produces husks or capsules, like those in which the chestnut is enclosed, but these contain no fruit. The wood is solid and strong and of a yellow color resembling the box. There is no other species of tree near it for the space of a hundred miles, excepting in one quarter, where trees are found within the distance of about ten miles. It is reported by the inhabitants of this district that a large battle was fought there between Alexander, king of Macedonia, and Darius. The towns are well supplied with every necessity and convenience, the climate being temperate and not subject to extremes either of heat or cold. The people of are the Mahometan religion. They are, in general, a handsome race, especially the women, who, in my opinion, are the most beautiful in the world. Chapter 23 of The Old Man of the Mountain and His Palace and Gardens Having spoken of this country, we shall now tell of the Old Man of the Mountain. The district in which his residence lay obtained the name of Mulahet. Alamut in northern Persia, signifying in the language of the Saracens the place of heretics, and his people that of the Muleh, Etai, or holders of heretical tenets, as we apply the term of Katharini to certain heretics amongst Christians. The following account of this chief, Marco Polo, testifies to having heard from sundry persons. He was named Alaudin, and his religion was that of Mahomet. In a beautiful valley enclosed between two lofty mountains, he had built a luxurious garden stored with every delicious fruit and fragrant shrub that could be procured. Palaces of various sizes and forms were erected in different parts of the grounds, ornamented with works in gold, with paintings, and with furnishings of rich silks. By means of small conduits in these buildings, streams of wine, milk, honey, and some of pure water were seen to flow in every direction. The inhabitants of these palaces were dainty and beautiful damsels, accomplished in the arts of singing, playing upon all sorts of musical instruments, dancing, and especially amorous dalliance. Clothed in rich dresses, they were seen continually sporting and amusing themselves in the garden and pavilions, their female guardians being confined within doors and never allowed to appear. The object which the chief had in view in forming a garden of this fascinating kind was this. 
that Mahomet, having promised to those who should obey his will the enjoyments of paradise, where every species of sensual gratification should be found, in the society of beautiful nymphs, he wanted it understood by his followers that he also was a prophet and the compeer of Mahomet, and had the power of admitting to paradise such as he should choose to favor. In order that no one might find his way into this delicious valley without his permission, he caused a strong and impregnable castle to be erected at the opening to it, through which the entry was by sacred passage. At his court, moreover, this chief entertained a number of youths from the age of twelve to twenty years, selected from the inhabitants of the surrounding mountains, who showed a warlike disposition and appeared to possess the quality of daring courage. To them he was in the daily practice of holding forth on the subject of paradise announced by the prophet, and of his own power of granting admission to it. At certain times he caused opium to be administered to ten or a dozen of the youths, and when they were unconscious, he had them conveyed to the several apartments of the palaces in the garden, 